Hi and welcome to episode 9 of Noob Eden. I am absolutely so pumped for this episode. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while, but we had to get that last sort of series about situational awareness out of the way. Uh, because the next 10 to 15 minutes or so, I'm going to show you something that for me is basically just the heart and soul of Eve. Now be warned, we are not even going to undock this episode. We are staying in the station. And you might think, well, that sounds boring. How can I how can I have fun and get inspired without even undocking and going into space? Well, actually, sometimes in Eve, that's just how it goes. Sometimes it might be an hour or so doing some stuff in station, preparing some things, learning some things that is actually part of the beauty of the game. So in this episode, we are going to climb the branches of the ship tree. So let's do it. We are going to go up to our Neocom menu, click on the E. We're going to come down to ship, ship tree. Now before we click it, we're actually going to click and drag it. So it's now got a permanent shortcut in our Neocom. And now when I click on it, I will get the ship tree that looks something like this. Some basic navigation. I can zoom in and out. In fact, let's close my station services. I want to see the whole thing. Zoom in and out with my mouse wheel. Left click and drag will drag me around the ship tree. Now, why is this ship tree so important? Well, basically, it's the heartbeat of EVE Online. Spaceships is the thing that's right at the core. The heart and soul of EVE is about the spaceships. There are 345 different ships that you can train into, not to mention almost a limitless number of configurations, how you can set them up, modify them, and fly them. So I remember the joy of exploring this ship tree as I sort of was in the early days of playing the game and just the sheer beauty of some of the artwork and the the awesomeness of, of training and, and finally getting into a new ship um, was just a, a real special part of the journey that I want to share with you guys. So I want to introduce you to some of the tools and information that you can get from this ship tree because not only can we learn about the ships, but more importantly, we can learn about what they do and what skills you need to train to get into a particular ship. So let's spend some time getting to know the ship tree. First of all, in the top left corner, you will see these icons. These represent the various races, some factions, pirate factions, corporations within EVE. Each of these has their own ship line. So if I was to click on the Amar Empire, what I'm looking at here now is the, the branch of the ship tree that represents the Amar ships. And you'll see for the main races, Amar, Kaldari, Galente, and Minmatar, these branches are quite substantive. Going down to some of the smaller branches, so if I was to click on the Sisters of EVE, You'll see looking at here, I'm only looking at three ships, so they can certainly vary in size. Now, just before we move on, let's set up a couple of things in our settings just to make this uh, a little bit of a smoother process. So hitting escape and hitting escape again is going to get me to my settings. First of all, display and graphics. I want to set that to high if you can. If your PC will allow you, set it as high as you possibly can so that when we're looking at some of the models of the ships, we're getting the uh, the best experience there also in general settings you'll see up here in the top left a setting for tooltips delay it may be long basically what this is when you hover over something if there's information it's how long before the information pops out I'm gonna bring it down fairly short for this uh, episode when you're actually playing the game you might find that distracting and you want to make that longer but we're gonna move it down here for now return to game and let's go back to our ship tree and you'll see now that whenever I hover over something uh, how sort of quick the information comes up. So let's go and we'll click on a Ma Empire because we're already starting to get some important information. Now it's certainly not my intention to go through in great depth and explain everything for every race and what it all means. It's about giving you some tools to go and do the exploring yourself. Some of that information that we already have available to us uh, come via these icons and if you hover over them those little tool tips I mentioned will pop straight up. So for the Amar I can see it says that they uh, they excel at using energy turrets, they use drones and they prioritize armor over speed. So already I know looking at Amar ships just generally I'm looking at things that are armor tanked, they'll use energy turrets and often they'll use drones. Now these little icons if I hover over them will give me some more information about those things. Energy turrets, armor, drones, 
and some other information that generally relate to Amar ships. I could do the same with Galente, and I'm going to get some information that says hybrid turrets, drones, armor, balanced with speed. And once again, you can hover over these icons to get more information. I'm going to let you play with that. We'll talk about some more of them soon, but let's get into the ship tree itself. How is it laid out? First thing, let's talk about Alpha and Omega. If I just zoom in a little bit here, you'll see that there are points with these little Omega symbols. They represent uh, blockages in the tree. So if you're an, an Alpha clone, then you cannot train ships beyond that marker. So you'll be restricted to things that are on the inside or the uh, at the main branch of the tree. And when you get to those little um, Omega symbols there, you'll see that they actually block you from training ships that are beyond those symbols so please be aware of that all right speaking of icons let's have a look at the ship group icon so right at the start of each group of ships there'll be a little icon this is the same icon that is on your overview when you're out in space that gives you an idea of the size or the group that that ship belongs to so these are the corvette ones this group here represents my frigates and that is the frigate icon now i can see to train into this group of ships i need to have got galente frigate to a skill level of one and you'll see that that is unlocked and i know that group is unlocked because of the they're brighter you'll see the others are grayed out i don't have the skills trained currently to get into those other groups but i do have the skills trained to get into this group and that skill level is galente frigate one now as i move along that branch so i'm going to continue along the frigate branch the next group i come to are the navy frigates if I hover over the group icon, I can see that it's a one hour, 17 minutes of training before I can access these ships. I need to get Galente Frigate trained to two before I can unlock this group. And it moves on from there. If I was to look at the Interceptor group, uh, hover over the icon, 23 days to get into that group, and it shows me the skills I need to unlock that group. As I go along the branch here, instead of along the, up the Frigate branch, I'm going to go along towards the destroyers so let's zoom in on those hover over that and i can see in eight hours 53 minutes if i train galente destroyer one i'll be able to access these group this group of destroyers let's keep moving along what about the battle cruisers well if i hover over that to access that group i'm going to need one day 23 hours and uh, it's sort of sequential i need to unlock these before i can unlock the cruisers before i can unlock the battle cruisers so there's already some information now coming to me about well you know what what should i be training now here's a quick question that is probably on the lips of most new players well what ships should i be training into and like many things we've come across in our videos the answer is it depends how you choose what ship to fly and what to train into is completely up to you. There's no right or wrong way. This is Eve. You find your way and you go with it. Now, you'll hear people on Reddit and forums say, oh, this ship is garbage or you should be flying this or you'll get an extra 2% uh, over this if you fly this ship. Look, worry about all that min-maxing stuff down the track. For now, for me, I think there's two kind of decisions you need to make to, to ascertain which way you're going to go. The first one will be what type of gameplay you want to do. Do you want to be an explorer? Do you want to be a miner? Do you want to haul freight? Do you want to be a combat pilot? If you feel that you have an answer or a, a vibe as to what you want to do in EVE, then that will help direct you towards those kinds of ships. So let's have a look at how the ship tree can give us some of the information about the various roles certain ships may play. I'm currently looking at the Galente Frigate group. I can see that there are six ships in that group. As I hover over the first one, I see the Navitas. Now I'm going to pull the image up because it's always nice to be looking at these ships because they're visually stunning. It's a small frigate. I can see the various skins that can go onto that frigate. As I hover over though, I can look at some information about the Navitas. If I go over these icons, I can see it's primarily fitted with small sized modules. Armor is its primary defensive mode. And this icon here indicates it's a support ship. Hull's able to repair or assist other vessels in combat. And that's reflected in the role bonuses as I look down here. The Galente Frigate bonuses, it has bonuses for remote armor repairer, so repairing other ships all the way through. So this is definitely a ship that is flown by what we call Logi pilots. In some other games, you might refer to them as healers. It's a support ship that helps repair other combat ships during battle. If that's the kind of thing that appeals to you, then these are the kind of ships you'll be looking towards. And shortly in this video, we'll look at, well, what kind of skills will you need to train to be a proficient 
in this ship. Let's work our way along though. Uh, the Tristan, we're going to look at that shortly. Let's grab another one. Let's go down to the Imicus. As I hover over this, once again, small modules. Armor is its primary defense system. And this icon indicates it's an exploration ship, primarily designed for exploring and doing sort of deep space reconnaissance. And once again, that is also reflected in its role bonuses. Core and combat scanner probe strengths, analyzer strengths. So if I'm into exploring and going trying to find riches and loot, this may be the kind of ship I want to start training into. The Atron, I can see this is a combat ship. It has some strengths here in attack. Uh, and also tackling, and uh, what else we got here? The oh, the Morlus on the end here. Okay, this icon indicates for me its hulls are able to fit debilitating systems, so it's a support, it's a disruptive ship. Okay, sensor dampening, so it has some traits and some role bonuses towards interrupting other ships during combat. So it's not a straight up combat ship itself, like maybe the Atron or the Tristan. But it does have particular role bonuses aimed at disrupting other ships during battle. So hopefully you can see just by that first level of information, you can start to work your way around the ship tree. In fact, let's go to a different race. Let's jump into Minmatar and let's jump into, I don't know, the Minmatar destroyers. Just hovering over the Thrasher here. What does it tell me? Small modules, projectile turrets are its main weapon. It's an attack hull, so very combat oriented, and it uses shield, the primary, primary form of defense. Once again, that is also reflected in its roll bonuses. So a lot of information about various ships available just simply by hovering over them, looking, having a look at the roll bonuses and some of these icons that are going to give you headlines about the type of role those ships are going to fit. Finally, if you are interested in something like mining, you may go to the ore ship tree and you'll see a smaller ship tree, but many of the ships that are now focused around mining and industrial work. So if you're interested in moving up into, say, mining barges, you can hover over this and see what's going to take me almost eight days to get the skills to get into this group. This ship here is the Procurer, and I can see it takes medium-sized modules, shields are its main defense, and it's a resource harvesting ship, and it has bonuses towards mining. So hopefully you can just see the way that the ship trees now are starting to point us towards the different types of gameplay and the ships that will suit those types of gameplay. Another way, which is totally legit as well, might simply be you just fall in love with the look of a particular ship, and you think, I want to fly that ship. I want to learn how to train into that and do what that does. So let's look at an example, a very distinctive looking ship might be the Myrmidon. Now we can look at the model of that ship by hovering over it, going up to the image here, clicking on that, we'll get our 3D model where we can sort of scroll around and have a look at that ship. And you might think, man, I just love that ship. Now while we're here, you can also customize the look of your ship and you can get a preview of the various skins that you can apply, that you can buy and apply onto that ship. And then you might think, oh man, in a zone Vanguard Myrmidon is just the bomb and you fall in love with that and you want to learn how to fly it. Go for it. It's Eve. Do what the heck you want. Now, while we are talking skins, there are two different ways you can acquire skins to apply to your ship. First one is you can buy them on the market. This little uh, using ISK, this little blue button here. If you're at a market hub, uh, you're going to have a better chance of having that skin available and the market you can see here there's no in his damn in his own vanguard skins where i'm at right now so i might need to move to jita for example to buy that if i want it and you pay is now bear in mind skins can be very expensive they can range from a couple of million isk up to the absolute billions so if the skin you're after is you know highly prized or quite rare then be prepared you may have to pay a lot of money for it the other way you can acquire a skin is to buy it with Plex. And if that option is available to you, you'll see this other button here. So if I click on this, it will open up the new Eden store where I'll actually be able to just simply pay for that skin using Plex. Here we go. The Inner Zone Vanguard skin will cost me 55 Plex. Now, if I don't have Plex, you can go to buy Plex up in the top right corner. It will take you out to CCP's website where you can use cash to buy Plex. And then you can use that Plex to buy skins and other things within the new eden store but we'll spend some more time on that in another video let's get into the meat of finding out some information about a particular ship 
And in this case, we're going to look at the Tristan here in the Galente Frigate Group. When I hover over this, I can see its traits. I can see that it has a bonus towards small hybrid turrets and drones, which line up with the information I got in the icons here. Let's click on it, and the information panel for the Tristan will open. I'm going to spend a bit of time going through the information that is here because there's so much to learn. The first tab, the Traits tab, is just simply a repeat of what we saw when we hovered over it. The next tab is the description tab. Usually this information isn't particularly useful, but it is sort of more, uh, I guess it's part of the law or the history around that ship. So interesting if you're into that. But the next one is super critical, the attributes of the Tristan. Now ships have three different layers of protection. They have their structure or their hull, which is the innermost uh, level of, of defense. Then they have the, a layer of armor on top of that, and then they have a shield layer on top of that. So three different layers that need to be chewed through before you actually explode and die. So here is some information about those three layers. We start with the structure. Now I can see that the structure hit points for the Tristan are at 550 hit points. And if I hover over each of these, I'll get the little tooltips that we talked about earlier. And it says structure hit points do not regenerate naturally, but they can be repaired by modules. So that's my structure hit points. This is what we call, by the way, raw hit points. There is another measure called effective hit points we'll talk about in a moment. Capacity is how big the cargo hold is. What will it be able to hold in its cargo? Once again, you can increase that with modules. Uh, drone capacity is how big the drone bay is. For example, light combat drones are five cubic meters in size. So this drone capacity will take eight of them because they have 40. Medium and uh, heavy drones are bigger as you go up. But drone bandwidth, well, how does that differ from capacity? Capacity is the size of the bay that you can fit the number of drones in it. Bandwidth is how many you can have out in space at once. So each drone will have a bandwidth. In this case, for a light drone, most of the time they will be five megabits per second. So even though I can fit eight drones in this bay, I can only have five of them out in space at any one time. Mass is how heavy the ship is, and that will affect the, the turning and the speed, because obviously the heavier the ship is, the more those things are impacted in a negative way. The volume is the size of the ship itself, not the volume of its cargo hold, but the actual volume of the ship. Now you'll see two numbers. The first number here outside the brackets is when it's constructed or assembled, 26,500 cubic meters. But when you repackage a ship before it's assembled, you can get it down to 2,500 meters. That is a handy number when you're trying to haul ships or move things around and you know you've got a limited amount of space to fit ships into the cargo hold, say, of a freighter. This is the value you'll be looking at because the ship is packaged. The inertia modifier, as this gets bigger, then your ship is going to get more sluggish in terms of acceleration and turning. These numbers now, let's spend some time on this because there are four types of damage that you can do or can be done to you. There is what we call electromagnetic damage and it's represented by this little lightning icon, icon often referred to as EM damage. Thermal damage with a little fiery icon, Kinetic damage, which is this sort of hitting, being hit by sort of a projectile um, icon, and explosive damage. Now, resistances represent how resistant your ship is to that type of damage. In this case, you'll see it's, it's the same across the board. The structure of this ship all has 33% resists to each of those four damage types which will mean my effective hit points will actually be more than the 550 raw. This is without any resists, but effectively my effective hit points will be higher because there is some resistance to that damage. Let's move on to armor. In this case, I can see the armor hit points for the Tristan are 450 and reading the little tooltip, I can see once again, armor does not regenerate by itself, but I can fit modules such as armor repairers if I would like to repair or regenerate my damaged armor. Now, let's look at the resistances. I can see 50% EM, 35% thermal, 35% kinetic, but only 10% explosive resistance. This is important because this represents what we call an explosive hole. This means if you are taking explosive damage, then you're going to be getting damaged faster because you've got an explosive resistance hole. Now, these are the kind of things you can fit and fill by fitting modules to plug those holes. Let's move down now and have a look at shield. It's got a 350 hit point shield capacity. Now that number is important because if I compare that to the armor, 
I can see the armor starts with a higher value of raw hit points, which lines up with the fact that we said the Tristan, if I look at the traits, is more of an armor-based ship using armor as its defenses. Well, that lines up with the attributes because I can see that it has a higher armor hit point to start with. Now, the art of fitting a ship is multiple videos on their own because there's no rule to say, well, I have to fit this for armor. I could fit it with shield modules as, a, as its main defense, but that's a discussion for another time. Let's, uh, oh, shield capacity. The other thing here is shield recharge time because shields will regenerate themselves over time without any modules. You can fit modules to repair them faster, but if you just leave them, you'll see that over 625 seconds, the shield for a Tristan will completely regenerate itself. Once again, I've got the resistances. It's got a huge EM damage hole, which is something I may want to consider when I'm fitting, or because I may fit this as an armor sh tank, this doesn't matter to me at all. Moving down, capacitor, which is basically your battery for your ship. Okay, I can see the capacity of the capacitor and also its recharge time. So if I left it for 175 seconds from empty, it will fully recharge its battery or its capacitor. We have some information about targeting. A signature radius is basically a measure of uh, how big the footprint of your ship is in space. Now, smaller signature radiuses Mean it means it takes longer to lock you up and it also means you can be harder to hit or take less damage. It's a complicated topic we'll talk about another time, but a smaller signature radius usually is better. Scan resolution is how quickly you can target other ships and sensor strengths represent your protection levels in some regards against ECM and a detection by probe. So complicated things that we'll look at down the track. Speed. This is the velocity of your ship without adding an afterburner or a micro warp drive. So just its raw velocity and its raw warp speed. Now we flew through that, but I hope you can see just by spending time looking at these attributes for various ships, you start to get a feel for their strengths and their weaknesses. Moving along to the fitting tab. This gives us an idea of what fitting slots are available to us. The general hardware of the ship, I guess. It has a CPU output, power grid output. Calibration relates to the rigs. Now, we talked about rigs in a previous video. When you fit them, each rig will have a certain number of calibration uh, values, and you can't exceed the value that that ship has available. When it comes to turret slots, these are the number of uh, hard points that you can fit gunnery turrets to or mining turrets to. Now, you'll see that that has a limit of two. However, it has three high power slots. Now I can only use two of those for turrets. The third one will it'll be what we call a utility high slot where I can put something else in that. So I've got high, medium and low power slots. In this case, I can see that there's three of each and there are three small rig slots. Now let's move on to requirements. Now there is a huge difference between being able to fly a ship and being able to use a ship. When we're talking about the requirements here, we're simply talking about what skills you need to have trained to sit in the ship and fly it around in space. Effectively, you won't be able to use it for much because a lot of those skills will, will relate to other aspects of the ship, but you can at least fly it. In this case, to, try, to fly the Tristan, I simply need Galente Frigate 1, Spaceship Command 1. I can see that I've got both of those. I can fly the Tristan. Now, being able to actually use a ship is going to require a bit more training, and that's where the mastery tab becomes valuable. Let's close these up, these little disclosure triangles, if they're open, and let's talk mastery for a bit. There are five levels of mastery for each ship, levels one through to five, that represent your capacity or your ability you to use that ship effectively. So if I wanted to look at mastery for level one for the Tristan, now I know I can fly it. I've got the requirements to fly the ship, but to start with the first level of mastery, it's going to take me another one day, one hour, 11 minutes of training. Now, what would I need to train to complete this level one of mastery? Well, this is where these categories, which we call certificates, are small groups of skills that relate to each certificate. I can see here three out of three, and the tick at the end means I have achieved that certificate. So I have armor tanking one certificate at level one. The only one that I'm missing down here, I can see this dot not trained, is light drones. So if I open up my light drone certificate, I can see I've trained two of the five required skills, 
And what do I need to train now to complete this level of mastery? Well, I can see that I'm required to train drones four. I've already got drone avionics to one and light drone operation to one, but I also need to get drone navigation to one and drone durability. So I know if I want to fly the Tristan and I want to at least get to that first level of mastery, these are the things I now need to put in my training queue. Everything else I've got, so if I close that up, I've got ticks on all of these. I've achieved all of those certificates for level one mastery, except my light drones certificate. And from there, it's just a matter of working your way up through the various levels of mastery for the ships that you want to fly. So if I want to go for level two in a Tristan, there's going to be 15 days. Now bear in mind, these I, this character is Omega now. So these are Omega training times. As an alpha, you'll need to double these times. And I can see exactly what I need to train. In armor tanking, I'll need to get mechan uh, repair systems to two. In uh, light drones, well, those other things I will have done from the previous level, plus some new ones. So this is a great directional tool for you to say, all right, I want to train this ship. I want to be able to use it effectively. What do I need to train? One last comment about mastery is back on the ship tree, you will actually see a little indicator of your current level of mastery for each given ship. So looking at the Tristan, you'll see the little brackets underneath there are empty, which indicate I don't have mastery one yet because I had to do those light drone skills. But if I look at the Atron, I can see I've already got mastery one as indicated by this little icon here. In fact, if I click on the Atron, you'll see at mastery level one, I have all of these ticked off. Now here's one of the little quirks. Remember I said earlier there's a big difference between being able to fly a ship and being able to use it. Now the mastery indicates your capacity to use a ship and that's shown for example on the uh, Catalyst Destroyer here. You can see it's grayed out. I don't yet have the skills to access that group. It'll be 8 hours 53 minutes of training before I can get into the Galente Destroyer group. But I do already have level 1 mastery to be able to use the Catalyst and indicated by the little one here on the mastery icon. So if I click on that, I've got all the mastery for level one, but I still don't yet have the skills to actually get in the ship and fly it. Well, I think we're just about done. I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna let you go and explore and just play with the ship tree and just find some amazing ships, get inspired by some of the things they do and perhaps inspire yourself to start training towards a certain type of gameplay. Take some time to go through the various trees. So once again, I'm back in Galente. Here's my frigate tree. And as I go up, I go through the uh, the Navy frigates, up into the Covert Ops frigates, electronic attack ships. They're all frigates as I go up that branch. Moving along to the destroyer branch. Once again, if I move up, I get it up into some of the Tech 2 destroyers. The cruiser branch, as I move up there, I get into Navy cruisers, heavy interdiction, all the different types of cruisers. Battle, uh, battle cruisers here battleships here and then moving up towards the big stuff the dreadnoughts the super carriers and carriers and of course the bigger ships in the game the titans as i go uh, a little bit lower down you can start to see a pathway here that takes me through some of the industrial ships into the freighters and the jump freighters there's so much to explore like grab a cup of coffee grab something to eat and just spend some time going through the various factions, races, and you'll see just one last thing as before we wrap up. If I was to go into something like one of these pirate factions, the Garistas, if I have a look at that, I've also got these extra little symbols here that indica indicate Kaldari and Galente. So with the pirate factions, they're actually like hybrids. They take some of the features from Kaldari ships, some of the features from Galente ships. So if I have a look at their traits for the worm here, for example, you'll see there are bonuses for every level of Galente frigate that I have trained, I'll get this bonus. For every level of Kaldari frigate trained, I'll get this bonus. And then they have their own roll bonuses as well on top of that. So they're kind of like hybrids calling on skills and giving you bonuses from the Galente and the Kaldari race. If we were to go with, let's say, Angel Cartel, they are drawing from Galente and Minmatar. So if we have a look at the Dramiel, I've got bonuses for Galente frigate skills and Minmatar frigate skills. My gosh, there is so much to get through there. I just want to let you guys go and play with it. I hope that's given you some idea of the incredible depth and complexity of the ships in the game and the skills required to fly them and the types of gameplay. So yeah, go forth and learn heaps. Good job. Well done.